This morning, we've taken our Cessna and are flying right over the geographic North Pole. Pretty, isn't it? The geographic North Pole is the point through which the Earth rotates. You stick a theoretical pole through this point and it will always point at the same place in the night sky. It just so happens that there's a star called Polaris in the space where our pole is pointing. This, for centuries, has been regarded as the North Star and was crucial to navigation right up until the point we all started using GPS. It's pretty easy to find, too. We need to start by finding the Big Dipper, part of the constellation Ursa Major. There it is, up in the sky on our left. Now, if we take the two stars that make up the end of the Dipper's cup and draw a line through them, that line will point us to the North Star. If we look up a little higher, we find it, almost exactly in line. You can also notice that the North Star is the beginning of the Little Dipper, but it can sometimes be easier to find the Big Dipper to start off with. Here at the North Pole, the North Star is right above our heads, at the highest point in the sky. As the Earth turns, which will simulate by running time forwards and backwards throughout the night, we see all the other stars move, but the North Star stays fixed. Notice whatever time we turn to, the two end stars of the Big Dipper always draw that line to the North Star. So that was at the North Pole, which is, by definition, at 90 degrees of latitude. Let's go down to the middle of the northern latitudes, the 45th parallel over Portland, Oregon. Let's find the North Star. Start with the Big Dipper. Have you found it? It's here. Draw a line through the two stars on the end, and that'll lead us to the North Star. Again, we can spin the Earth and notice the North Star staying fixed in the sky no matter what time of night. Notice this time, though, it's not right overhead like at the North Pole, it's 45 degrees up in the sky. This is roughly where we'll find it throughout the continental United States. Now, our aircraft is pointed almost right at where the North Star is. A quick look inside and at our compass shows us on a north heading. If we point towards the North Star, we're pointed towards a spot on the Earth where that star is directly overhead, the North Pole. If we keep flying with the North Star in front of us and we don't run out of fuel, the star climbs up higher in the sky as we reach the North Pole. One caveat, geographic north and magnetic north aren't the same, so flying directly at the North Pole won't give us a perfect north heading on the magnetic compass. It'll be off by the amount of variation for our area. Here in Portland, the variation is about 15 degrees. Okay, so what? This isn't the Boy Scouts, right? We have GPS and radio navigation and radar vectors to help with navigation, and the compass shows us north anyways. Still, any extra bit of knowledge that allows us to increase our situational awareness with just a glance up at the sky can help us, especially at night, which can be so disorienting already. Let's have a look at this exercise closer to the equator, in Panama, below the 10th parallel. Again, here's the Big Dipper, and we draw the line to find the North Star. It's almost on the horizon, which is where it would be if we were at the equator, making it very hard to spot there. Still, here, if we spin the Earth and speed up time, it stays fixed. Notice, though, that the Big Dipper sets by going below the horizon at certain times. This makes it harder to find at these lower latitudes. But at least in the mid-latitudes where most U.S. flying is done, it's a not-too-bad, quick-and-dirty for finding true north. Try it out on your next flight, and try out Flight Insight Ground Schools by going to our website linked here or in the description.